Hello, my name is Jake Rizzotti, and this show really isn't a show. Just me talking about some of the Apple stuff that matters in the world today, starting with Ted Borns, whoever gets that reference. Alright, so it's been about two weeks since the iPhone 4S launched, and that's enough time for people to form a basic opinion of the device, you know, was it worth the upgrade, are the features good enough, whatever. Uh, so, as such, Cam has a full written review of the iPhone 4S up on the site now, and it seems like his basic impression is about what I expected, where Siri is great, the camera's great, it's, you know, the device is a little bit faster, nothing to write home about, but still cool. But overall, upgrading from a 4, it isn't worth it. Uh, people from a 3G or a 3GS, I'd say yes, probably it would be worth the upgrade just because you're jumping up so much in performance and design and stuff. But if people are upgrading from the 4, Cam says that within a few days he didn't even realize that he was using a 4S anymore. It's just indistinguishable from the 4. So, you know, basically it, it's a great device, but so is the iPhone 4. Now, despite the iPhone 4S's sort of lackluster response, um, the public didn't really seem to mind that there weren't that many changes. In fact, a record-breaking number of iPhone 4S's sold, 4 million in the first three days of it being on sale, which not only surpasses the iPhone 4's opening weekend, it doubles it. I'd be very interested to see how many of those people were upgrading from a 4 as opposed to a 3G or 3GS or even an Android phone or Blackberry or... Uh, so if any of you guys have upgraded to the 4S, let me know down below in the comments section which device you upgraded from and, you know, what swayed your decision. If you upgraded from a 4, is it just because you like Apple and you wanted the new phone? Or did you have to have Siri, the camera, whatever it is, let me know. Now keep in mind that, that initial 4 million devices was a, a pretty limited market. Um, but now with the iPhone 4S is available for pre-order in 22 more countries, including... Slovakia, Australia, Ireland, and a bunch of other places. So expect those numbers to jump up dramatically. And this device is already breaking records and it doesn't seem to be slowing down at all. Now unfortunately, for those of you in the 22 countries that have yet to get the iPhone, uh, pre-ordering doesn't guarantee that you'll get the device on the 28th when it, it launches in your country. Uh, shipping times on Apple.com are now one to two weeks just because everybody else has bought all of the phones that they've made, so they gotta build up their stock again. So your best bet to get it on that day is to go stand in line at your carrier store, at your local Apple store. If you don't want to do that, if you don't mind waiting, one to two weeks probably isn't that bad, but uh, that time is probably jumping up and up and up every day, so good luck. Alright, and the last iPhone 4S story of the day has to do with C Spire. Now if you haven't heard of C Spire, don't feel bad, most people probably haven't. Uh, it is a regional carrier in the U.S. that covers five southern states. But if you do live in Tennessee, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, or Georgia, you will be very, very happy to know that C Spire will begin to carry the iPhone 4S very soon. Now, I don't know about you, but this was pretty surprising to me just because the iPhone just became available on Sprint, which is the nation's third largest carrier. Um, if it took four or five years for the iPhone to come to Sprint, it seems strange that they would go from Sprint, with millions of subscribers, down to a regional carrier in the U.S. that only covers five states. As a lot of you guys pointed out in the comments, what about T-Mobile? T-Mobile is the fourth largest carrier in the U.S. and they get passed over and Ceasefire gets the iPhone instead? I have no explanation for that. Seems very, very <laughs> strange to me. I'm sorry for you T-Mobile customers out there, that, that's too bad. T-Mobile is just getting no, no iPhone love. Alright, moving on, let's talk a little bit about the iPhone 4S competition. You may or may not know that the Droid Razor was announced this week, and the specs are just crazy. It's 2 millimeters thinner than the iPhone 4S, it has a 1.2 dual-core gigahertz processor, it has an 8 megapixel camera that is capable of shooting 1080p video, it has a 4.3 inch super high definition screen, and it has an 1800 milliamp hour battery. Oh, and it's LTE compatible. Now I'm mentioning this because a pretty lively debate happened in the comment section of the article on today's iPhone. What do you guys think about this? At least on paper, the iPhone 4S doesn't compare to this phone. You know, with the Droid Razor and with a uh, Android ice cream sandwich, how much longer do you think the iPhone is going to stay competitive with such minor changes? I know for a lot of people it's not about the specs, not about uh, the upgrades and stuff, it's about the company and the user experience and all that stuff, and there, I admit, Apple 
takes a cake or the ice cream sandwich, but I can't help feeling that Apple has just fallen behind a little bit. A lot of people were expecting the next-gen iPhone to be another game-changer, and it wasn't. I don't know, I mean, clearly by the numbers from the iPhone 4S, people are very happy with the device, but that's just my opinion. Okay, and finally, there were a ton of people who got the iPhone 4S, as I've said before, and not all of them have had an iPhone in the past, or maybe even a cell phone in the past, so, um, it doesn't hurt to go over the basics, and this week, to sort of help those people out, Cam posted a how-to on how to take a screenshot. All you have to do is click the top button and the home button, and then let go, and voila! Screenshot. All right, well, that's all the big news for this week, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. Uh, definitely keep in mind that the links to all of these stories I talked about in this video are in the description down below. So if you want to further investigate any of those, feel free. And if you want to talk to me about iPhone 4S, iOS 5, or taking screenshots, you can follow me on Twitter at TIP underscore Jake. I try to get back to everybody that tweets me, so if you have something to say, the best place to do it is there. And as always, for more news, views, and reviews, definitely head over to todaysiphone.com. Okay. I got these new light bulbs and they're so bright. <sighs> ah. Ow. Oh, that got really hot. Mm. The maximum wattage for that lamp is 40, and that light bulb is 100. That can't be safe.